I'm gonna put a little clip that never made it into a video. I'm gonna put it now and you can take a look at it. I knew this about Mocha. She gets overwhelmed. Um, or this one for the end because it really is the one that hurts me the most. Um, again, I don't want this to happen ever again, ever, ever again. And I feel like I kind of failed Briera in that sense wanted my attention so where there are like a hundred goats screaming and the person is talking to the camera and i'm like how how can you do i am such a failure when they scream or when they're being loud it must mean something i have a problem i i can say that i have a problem she cried and cried and cried so yes I ignored this huge infection behind my hey ear. Hey everyone, today I decided to come to a different part of the property, kind of show off our blackberry bramble, I think that's what it's called, and talk about three things that I, that I could have done better this past kidding season. Three things that I'm trying to improve, for next kidding season and my hope with sharing these things which is never nice to kind of expose yourself to the internet is to share my experience something that didn't work for me and based on my experience maybe you can prepare yourself if this is the first time that you're going to go through kidding season or if it's going to be next year or whatever the case may be i hope that my failures really help you prepare better and if you already went through a big part of your kidding season or completely through your kidding season and you'd like to share with me three things that you're planning to improve on do differently or maybe something that you did and it's new and really worked for you and you just want to share it with me so I can try it I would love to read it in the comments down below I've been sharing more content like this um, since I don't know for the last weeks I don't know how long maybe two weeks I've been trying to be a little bit more open about things that go right and things that don't go right and I've been learning so much about different people here that watch the videos but they own goats themselves you own goats yourself and you know there are some others that just watch because they can't because they live in a city or it's just not the right time but there's a lot of people with a lot of experience so I would love to get your insight in this things as so, well number one thing that I think I went wrong and I'll explain why I think I went wrong on that is not being done with a barn extension that we plan for kidding season if you were with me around kidding season if not i'm gonna have a playlist it's called vlog march i kind of walked you through the entire month as the kids as the girls were kidding and so check that out if you're interested we'll be link down below but during that time we were building this barn extension now this wasn't done on purpose we had a horrible accident where we were t-boned um, in December so we were in no way shape or form ready to build anything or to even be outside for longer periods of time uh, I we spent a lot of months we spent on the couch and I'm glad it was kind of winter because I don't think I could have done it if it was in the middle of the spring or summer it just would have been so hard for me to stay still even though I stay still because everything hurts so you know I didn't plan to be late on that barn extension but having five girls do the same week and I was hoping that they would go into different days but two girls went in labor at the same time 
um, another one went the day before and then the other one two days before and then the other one three days before and it was a mess and what I mean by, by, a, by a mess is that I did not have room to let mom stay with the babies for as long as I thought they should have I don't know what your idea is on that and we all have different ways of doing things but for me one of the things that I've noticed is that every mom is different so sometimes bonding for a mom that it's a pro uh, will be you know 24 hours and she's good to go feed those kids be outside be with the herd there are other moms that really have a hard time um, reminding themselves that now they have babies and that was the case for me this year we had two first fresheners in the month of March and I felt in a rush to push one of them out of the kidding stall and the one that I had four days she stayed with her babies for four days being a first freshener which was Gaia she was the best mom those kids are the healthiest those kids are the smartest those kids know who their mom is and they know what they have to do and I feel like her sister Briere which was the other first freshener she had no idea what she was doing because she had her babies on the 7th March 7 and again please watch those videos if you're new to the channel all the births will be also linked down below but um, she had babies on the 7th and then on the 8th Mocha and Annie both went in labor at the same time so I had to kick Briere out with her two boys less than 24 hours after she kidded to put this brand new uh, batch of girls that were in labor and really that was not good um, Briere really did a, a good job raising those boys but it's because the boys were big enough they were strong enough and they were persistent enough to just follow her around not because she made an effort to make sure that they ate and all the things that other moms do when they're smaller these kids were bigger so they kind of caught on what they had to do but the first I mean those first 24 hours when they have to be with the general population of the barn it was so hard for Briere. She cried and cried and cried. And I think I was telling this to Heather. I think Briere is going to drive me insane. Honestly, I have a problem. I, I can say that. I have a problem. I cannot deal with a lot of um, noise. Like, it doesn't matter if it's construction, if it is... A goat that is trying to get your attention I mean my goats are all over there they can look at me they know that I'm here and they're not screaming their heads off and you know it's just one of those things that when they scream or when they're being loud it must mean something okay that's pretty much how I work with my goats if they're screaming something is wrong somebody needs help somebody needs water and they just run out they i'm late with dinner so they'll remind me uh, they can't find their kids like when they are being loud it's for a reason and so i understand that it's my problem i know that there are farms where there are like a hundred goats screaming and the person is talking to the camera and i'm like <gasps> How? How can you do <laughs> I am such a failure. I can't. I need to be everywhere. I need to figure out what's wrong. Why is that goat crying? There's no way that they need to be crying like that. And so I understand that's kind of my problem. So when Briere, the day that Annie and Mocha had their babies, which was the day that I kicked her out, it was one of the hardest days ever not only because I have to be there with Mocha who had quads and a, co a couple of breech kids then as soon as I was done with Mocha I had to ask help from my husband and say can you please 
make sure that these babies are drinking because I couldn't bend anymore. My back was killing me after the accident. My back, it's been horrible, but because of all the kidding being so close, I was extra tired and I was extra achy. So he helped me with that. And then I see Annabelle that is, you know, just kind of signaling that she's about to start pushing so I go inside I take some medicine come outside look at Annie she's ready and then I, here I am trying to pull this ginormous baby or help her really with her this ginormous baby that she was having the first one Killy so you know in while all that was happening Briere was outside and outside is a matter of speaking because it was raining so they weren't outside outside they were outside the kidding pens inside the barn and she was crying and crying and crying and crying and crying and she wanted my attention i'm sure she had no idea what she was feeling at the time she had no idea about these two kids she ended up with i'm sure she didn't have enough time to bond with those boys and again i mean she feeds them she takes care of them but i feel like their connection initially would have been a lot better if i was able to leave her in the kidding pen for as long as it took until she calmed down and didn't have to be so worried about them um i think that it was kind of a mix of what's happening to me and at the same time uh what do i need to do with these kids just just tell me or help me or you know you feel like this this goats would have the instinct and they do for the most part but you also have to understand that these are domesticated animals and you know some of them are better at that and some other ones are really need a little bit of guidance and I feel like I kind of failed Briera in that sense because you know she uh, she struggled and I did not have the time or the energy or the resources to tend to her because it was me and my husband it was just the two of us doing everything and my husband was trying to finish the barn extension which will take me to the second thing that I want to do better next time next time I want to have um, a better setup like if I'm gonna have five does that are due the same week they need to have a stall or they need to have space where they can be with those babies for as long as it takes for them to bond and to calm all those hormones that are raging as soon as they have babies um, again i don't want this to happen ever again ever ever again and so I'm going to plan things better. I want to plan things better so this doesn't happen again. And everyone gets a chance to take as long as they need in order to, you know, create that bond and to have a better overall experience. I feel like out of the five girls that kidded, you know, Clara lost one of the babies, was born dead. Um, Mocha lost her girl and you know she kind of looked for her for a little bit but she was pretty much over it by the end of the day and uh, it was funny because she was looking for Blondie who kind of looked like her girl Rosie that died and she crushed her she crushed Rosie so I mean that's how aware she was of everything I swear the sun always find me whatever I am I just need to move a little bit but um so next time I want to have a kidding stall for each of the does that will be due within the same week if it is in different weeks then we can make arrangements we really don't need a kidding pen for each one of them but if I am going to have five girls do the same week then they all need to have a stall and that's where it comes the extension of the barn into place right now is my milking room it is where i give medicine where i train hooves where i do all of the maintenance where i do all the things that i need time with the goats one on one but that also can be turned into 
two or three more kidding stalls if that's necessary and I've already planned the whole thing I kind of have an idea I'm gonna put something um, my idea right now is to put um, feed bags open in the bottom as a tarp to kind of cover the floor and make sure that it, when they pee or poop it's not going to get into the actual plywood of the floor and then I'm gonna do some not permanent kind of uh, kidding pens and I think that's going to be the worst case scenario do we need more kidding stalls because they're kidding the same week and then okay we're going to take that extra room that we have there and we're gonna turn it into something that will help us the second thing that I think like we could have done better is the construction part uh, if you watch my kidding videos you can hear a lot of power tools and if you have goats you know where I'm going um, goats are very I mean they get spooked about things that they're not used to and they are not used to power tools and I feel like when some of the girls were in labor they really were having a hard time concentrating when they were hearing this loud noises in the background one of them was Annie she was stalling because this first girl she had was huge and every time I felt like she was going to start pushing and then we'd hear the drill or any other kind of power tool she would just stop and if I think about it I know that it had a lot to do with all the movement and all the different things that were new to them happening in the background I remember uh, I mean, different people telling me that when your does are gonna go into labor not only you should be there or somebody that they know and trust should be there but how uh, hard it is when somebody that they don't know attends the birth and I'm not saying that that person will attend it instead of you I'm saying that sometimes bringing a stranger into that situation will make it stressful for the mom so I do have friends that love the idea to be here for the births however I don't really do it unless it's somebody that is going to um, help in a way that you know I need like there's something going wrong and I need help from somebody well that's a completely different scenario but if things are going right and we're just excited to see the babies we can wait until the babies are born and then kind of show the babies to our friends or people that really love newborn baby goats but um, I think that you know as bad as it is to have somebody they don't know during birth uh, all the commotion that was happening in the background all the rain the hail the 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 snow there was um i think it was during annie's and mocha's birth there was a windstorm and everything was flying things were hitting the side of the barn and um the babies that were outside clara's babies and briar babies that were less than 24 hours old they were out there and you know the moms were kind of doing their own thing and getting scared and going inside and the kids were outside and I found myself trying to kind of put the babies in and it was just a lot of things that were out of my control and that I understand and we will adjust and we will do better but I think one of the things that was really under our control was to make sure that at the time of birth nothing else was going on that we could control and um, yeah I mean it sounds silly but if you have goats you know how hard it is for them to adjust to new noises new people uh, it's it's really one of those things that they're creatures of habit and I just felt like all the construction was really not helping and I found myself more than once very frustrated with the whole thing and I'm leaving number three 
um, or this one for the end because it really is the one that hurts me the most and it's the one that I think it I had to pay the highest price for this one and with full knowledge I did this okay which breaks my heart because I feel like we could have we could have had a different outcome if I just didn't if I would just follow up with, with what I said I was going to do and that is bottle feeding I had every intention of bottle feeding these babies uh, even with all my health problems with my back problems with my doctor's appointments with my accident drama and dilemma and all the things I knew I wanted to bottle feed quads and we had two different sets of quads and I know I should have pulled Clarita from Clara and I should have pulled Rosie and Mocha Chamose and take it upon myself to make sure those babies got enough to eat and here is like a little controversial thought because again some people feel very strongly one way or the other but I feel like my goats the ones that have quads are good moms but I also feel like because they're quads they're usually there's gonna be one or two that are gonna be smaller and by smaller I'm telling you a one pound baby or two barely two pound baby and maybe your does have three and four pound quads that's awesome that's not the case for me and I knew this and I didn't pull those babies and Rosie ended up dead now I know it was because her mom crushed her but I think she crushed her because she was overwhelmed and I knew this about Mocha she gets overwhelmed uh, last year she tried to reject the four boys she had and not because she was a bad mom or because she's a bad mom it's because in the first week after having babies and Rosie died on day five okay and and this is why I'm kicking myself for it because I feel a hundred percent responsible for what happened because I know that the first week after Mocha kids her hormones are completely out of control last year she tried to reject her four boys she didn't want anything to do with them for the first week like I really had to put her on the milk stand and put two boys at a time and make sure that they were eating and now this year she had quads and again she was overwhelmed but I I did see it but I didn't think it was bad I didn't think it was bad enough and I thought maybe I'm thinking that she's that way but she's not and even when Mocha because this is her third freshening even with Mocha in the first freshening with the twins Gaia and Brie those were the healthiest baby girls ever but because they were healthy and because they were big when they were born uh, three pounds something which it's pretty average it's not that they were huge but they were persistent enough that even though Mocha was kind of rejecting them or not rejecting them but really trying to avoid them uh, she never had bought them she never was mean to them but she was trying to avoid them and that's what she does uh, she tried to avoid the four boys last year and this year maybe she didn't want to avoid them but she was overwhelmed and I just didn't see it and or maybe didn't pay attention close enough attention to realize what was happening and I really I don't want to say pride myself but I know my girls to at that level you know I know that Annabelle is very independent she that she's very strong and she will get overwhelmed but she will feed those kids and she will be right behind them and making sure that each one of them is drinking I know that Clara is the same way until there's one that is weak and then she'll push it away I know that they all have their own 
quirks and things and there's nothing wrong with the things that they do it means absolutely nothing if you're watching if you're paying attention and if you are actually trying to be ahead of the game and I wasn't ahead of the game I really feel like I felt mocha I felt rosy and it's you know and I felt myself because I said I was going to bottle feed but to be honest with you that first week when I should have pulled those babies it was like I was overwhelmed myself so I don't know if I could have done it you know I don't know after what happened to Cla uh, after what happened to Clara that she had those stillborn babies I was thinking well um you know I don't know if this is for me I don't know if I can put myself through this I don't and so all that doubting really didn't help anybody it didn't help me it didn't help the girls it didn't help anybody and while I was doubting myself and while I was doubting if I was going to continue to do this and if I wanted to put my heart and my soul through the, this heartache ever again you know M Mocha was struggling herself with her kids and it just it shouldn't have happened the second that I weighed those kids that first day when they were born they should have been pulled they should have been inside the trailer with us we should have been feeding them and uh, I feel like that is a hundred percent on me so those are the the things that are really heavy on my heart and as a extra I guess because this is gonna be a pretty long video if you're still here you're gonna learn about this but maybe the the extra thing that I want to be better about next year is about being more aware of my health as I was going through all of this and as I am blaming myself for a lot of things that happen I come to give myself a little bit of grace because I'm gonna put a little clip that never made it into a video. I'm gonna put it now and you can take a look at it. You know, no, I haven't done my hair, haven't done anything. I had something removed from the back of my ear yesterday, so it's nasty. I hope I didn't turn and flash you with all the nastiness that is coming out of it. Um, yeah, so <laughs> while I was with the girls, and their births and everything it's almost like i was in a zone that i needed to be here thank goodness i was here because all these breech babies would have been a nightmare if i wasn't here so i i'm pretty happy that i was here but i started getting like this ginormous uh, there's a name for it if i can find it i'll put it here but it's basically a giant pimple that grows in the back of my ear every i don't know four years I have to just get it out drain it and then this time it was as hard as a rock and I couldn't get it out and it was disgusting so last night after we did all this we went to the hospital um, because I could not bear the pain I mean as the girls were giving birth I was just in my zone and I couldn't think about the pain in the back of my ear but it was getting to all this it's all swollen and yesterday it was starting to turn pink and then up here it's all it was also disgustingly red and the actual back I don't want to show you because it's gross okay I'm gonna show you so if you don't want to watch don't watch but this is how it looks at by the end of the day now I'm gonna take a shower and I'm gonna change the bandage but it's gross so don't look if you're gonna be upset about it And my husband is really freaked out that I'm here with the goats and that that's open, that's draining right now. Um, the surgeon said that it's it was like a rock. Whatever was there was calcified, so they had to cut really big to get the whatever calcification out of it. It was so painful, so painful you have no idea. But I'm so thankful that I went last night because 
they gave me antibiotics and I don't have to take any more pain medicine. As I was going through the births, I was on like ibuprofen 800 every eight hours because it was unbearable, the pain. But it's a, you know, you think about it, it's like, ooh, it's a pimple. Yeah, it's a cyst. So something was happening underneath it and now I have it there. And no, I'm okay. I asked the doctor, can I do other things? Can I be around the goats? Can I? And he said, it's fine. You just, when you go at night, take a shower, make sure you wash that area with soap and water, and then just put a clean bandage so it continues to drain at night and you're not draining on top of your pillows and stuff like that. And it kind of protects it during the day. Right now, it's nasty. I don't. So yes, I ignored this huge infection behind my ear for the entire week. I was not only taking pain medicine for my back, but I was taking pain medicine because I had a fever. And I had a fever for five days straight. And I was trying to do everything that I could not to go to the doctor, because I, who has time to go to the doctor during kitten season? And everyone but Gaia I felt like I had to be there because you know things maybe they would have done it by themselves I'm not gonna say that they wouldn't have in a previous years I would have said well they can do it without you but this year I felt like no I'm gonna come back to a dead though and maybe that was my anxiety thinking but I ended up taking a really long time to go to the doctor and I ended up going to a regular, um, like I had to get these shots. So I go get the shots and I talk to this lady and I'm like, do you think somebody can see me here for, an, I think I have an infection behind my ear. And the lady looked at my, the back of my ear and said, you think? I messed up my tripod and now it doesn't want to stay. So hopefully it won't be that wobbly if I'm holding it, but it might. And this nurse was telling me, you think you, need, you have an infection? You need to go to the ER as soon as possible because that can go septic. And I thought to myself, no way. And I get to the doctor and he looks at me and says, there's no way you had that infection for over a week. And I'm like, yes. It's like, we need to cut you open and get everything out. And here I am in the emergency room, spending about eight hours there with my husband and with the most painful thing that I've ever experienced other than childbirth, because that hurts. But I remember, I mean, he was just pushing and pushing and pushing and everything that was inside was calcified. So it was like pushing rocks from my insides and trying to have it come out from this small incision that he made in the back of my ear. It was extremely painful. That night I left with more pain that I went in with, but it was all the maneuvering to get it out. And then they gave me antibiotics that same night because they were like, it's too late, your pharmacy is going to be closed. Welcome to the Oregon coast, everything closes early. And um, I remember living in Utah and going to Walgreens 24 hours. Thanks. There's no 24 hours anything here. So anyways, I end up taking this medicine and feeling better in about 10 days. I was 100% better. But it really helped. The antibiotics helped that first night. And I remember just dealing with babies and, you know, bottle babies. And, and I was thinking... I don't know how I was doing all this with this infection behind my ear that really could have been a lot worse. So for next year, I want to put myself first in a lot of those situations and find a time to get it done if something arises because I just cannot put myself second every time that I'm busy and that's what, that's what I do. Every time we're so busy doing something, I'm always thinking, no, this can wait, no, this can wait. And you know, 
as much as I think I'm pretty good at prioritizing, sometimes I don't make myself a priority. And in this case, it could have been a lot worse. Um, the infection was pretty bad and it was touching something that was very dangerous and it could have gone to the blood within days, hours. They just don't know how long it would have taken. But basically, I almost died during kidding season and it wasn't of a heartache or it wasn't because I was stressed, but it was actually a physical reason that I was ignoring. And I just don't want to do that ever again. I want to figure things out and try to be smart and try to prioritize myself if that's the case because I feel like all the stress that I put myself through while kidding season was happening and all the frustration and all the tears and all not all of them but most of them were just because I was exhausted and I was sick and I was I had a fever I had an infection and I think I just made it harder for myself to deal with that just because I didn't want to deal with what was wrong with me first because I felt like you know what if something happened to the girls what if they give birth and that's where my anxiety comes in if you remember I had my doctor appointment on March 1st and Gaia went into labor on March 1st and my kids ended up helping her but she didn't need help getting those babies out but what if it was something like Brie what if there was a stuck kid like Bree's? I was lucky that time and I didn't want to test my you know my luck and say, mm, well, that's not going to happen ever again. Well, it could have. But I also need to think about, okay, the second that I have available between uh, kiddings, I need to do something. You know, I need to prioritize my, myself and try to trust the process next time. And maybe all this happened for a reason and maybe next year it's going to be a super easy kidding season and maybe it won't be horrible i don't know what's coming but i do know that i made myself uh stress and i made it so much worse and i made it so much worse by not listening to my body and it could have ended really badly you know because I'm thinking, here I'm thinking, I don't want to leave them alone during birth. And I'm like, no, well, if I die, basically, there's kind of no way that I'm going to come back to them. Or that I'm going to be there for them either. So, that was a really scary situation that... Sometimes my ducks go into the brambles and they show up out of nowhere. And they scare the crap out of me. Sometimes it's a raccoon or my favorite, a skunk. So anyways, uh, that is it. I would love for you to tell me what you would do different, uh, what you did right, any advice. I just feel like I get the best advice from you guys and uh, I guess some of different scenarios and different things that you guys do that I've never thought about and that I never consider and it's always, always, always helpful and even if you don't agree with me even if you think that you know you've done these things before and you're fine um, I completely respect your opinion as well so you don't you don't have to agree with me and everything that I'm saying I understand we're different people and we feel and we do and we treat things differently so that would never hurt my feelings so thank you so much for being here today guys I truly appreciate it talk to you guys next